A chop saw is one of the best tools you can use to quickly get accurate cuts for your fabrication projects. And no matter what make and model you look at, they basically come in two different types, abrasive chop saws and those with a carbide tipped blade. And we're gonna look at the difference between those types of saws here. Abrasive chop saws like this one use a bonded abrasive blade. It's similar to a grinding wheel or a cutoff wheel that you'd have on an angle grinder. And for this reason, they spin at a pretty high speed. This particular saw runs right around 4,000 RPM. Now this is the type of saw that I used in my dad's shop when I was first learning fabrication and for many years after that uh, until I upgraded to use one with a carbide tipped blade. Saws like this Evolution that use a TCT or tungsten carbide tipped blade on them actually cut through more like a machining operation with each tooth because they have these carbide teeth here on the uh, outside of each tooth. And for this reason, they have to run at a much slower speed. This one runs right around 1,450 RPM. So both of these tools do a similar job. Why would you pick one versus another? Well, there are a few factors to consider. One is your cut speed, how fast you're making it through. Cut quality and accuracy is really important. How big of a mess do they make? What materials can you cut? And also, you gotta look at cost as a factor there too, not just up front, but as you use it. So we're gonna dive into each of these. Let's start off by looking at cut speed. Now when it comes to cut speed, both of these are manually operated saws, and so the actual speed's gonna vary a little bit depending on how hard you pull down on it and how hard you work the saw. But from my experience, you'll generally make it through in a little less than half the time on one with a carbide tooth blade compared with an abrasive saw. Now while this can vary a little bit depending on the particular model of saw and the blade that you use and a number of other factors, I think it's safe to say that you will save a little bit of time with this type of saw. Now another factor to consider when it comes down to time of fabrication is how much work are you going to have to do to the material after you cut it or what is your cut quality like? Now when it comes to cut quality, the main thing to look at here is what size of burr do you have left on that you might have to grind off before you can fit and fabricate things. So let's take a look here with an abrasive saw and because of the nature of the process, it tends to deform and spread material and form a pretty large burr. So I've cut a number of different structural shapes here. You can take a look at the size of burr that was left after cutting each of those here with an abrasive saw. Now let's compare that with the burr that you see coming off of a carbide two saw off the evolution here uh, on those same shapes. And while you can get a little bit of a burr on there, it's usually small enough that I don't worry about it for fabrication purposes. And so that's really helpful. You know, the surface just looks a lot more like a clean machined surface than one that's been ground down through. Now let's go ahead and put those side by side and take a look at them. On the left, there are each of the parts cut with the abrasive saw, and you can see the ones cut on the right. So there, there's a clear difference between them there. And I think that's even a bigger savings than the time that you save from the cut speed. Now while we're talking about cut quality, let me point out one other thing. The material that comes off of abrasive saws heats up quite a bit. Because it's a grinding operation, just like if you were grinding with an angle grinder, it would heat something up, it, that happens there. Where when you're cutting it off more like a machining operation with a carbide blade, it's basically still room temperature and you can just grab it right away. So, so that really is pretty helpful. Cut accuracy is really important, especially as you start building more complicated projects because when you have uh, the wrong length or the wrong angle, that can propagate throughout a structure. So let's take a look at cut accuracy. When it comes to straight cuts, honestly, both of these saws can make a really accurate cut if you mark them, making a nice 90 degree on it. But uh, the challenge comes when you start cutting miters or angle cuts. Now with either of these saws, it's really a good idea to use a protractor or a square to set that angle to the blade if you want to get it really accurate. And I'm going to set this really, really close so that we can take a look at how they cut. Now watch really closely as I start to cut with the abrasive saw. You may be able to see that blade flex over a little bit 
and start to wander off to the side. And this is something that I ran into for a long time using these. And you can cut a little more slowly and that helps to some extent, but it still happens. And I've, I've had comments from viewers, a ton of them about this happening to them too. So it's a pretty common problem. But if you look at the cut here, not only has it wandered off the angle, I didn't mark the length, but most likely it's gonna be a little bit long too. And the, you know, how much is this gonna affect your project? It depends on what you're building and, and the tolerance is there, but, but I'll say that it isn't helpful. Now, because the carbide blades take, you know, one chip at a time, they don't tend to push to the side because you, you don't have that friction where it's just rubbing on it like the abrasive saw. They will cut through. And so I haven't run into this problem with the carbide tipped saws, any of the ones that I've used. And so that works just a, a lot better to get a nice accurate miter cut. Let's talk about what kind of a mess there is to clean up after using each type of saw. You know, I like to keep a clean shop. And so with an abrasive saw, you tend to have more of a grinding dust, these small filings that get spread all over the place. And it's not just the metal itself because the disc breaks down as you use it. You have the abrasive and the different uh, components of that disc that get spread around as well. And it's not too bad to sweep this up. It sweeps up pretty easily off the floor, but it also hangs in the air. I mean, you can smell it for quite a while after you use a saw like this. And so it's especially a good idea, just like any grinding operation, to use a respirator with an abrasive saw like this. With the carbide tooth saw, you have these larger chips that get cut off with each passing tooth and these can spread around a little bit. They're a bit sharp, um, but they also sweep up relatively easily and you can use a magnet to clean them up as well. This is a magnet that Evolution uh, sells that actually picks them up and then you just pull this handle and they fall off into your bins. The chips from the TCT blades all settle on the ground so you don't have that grit and abrasive hanging in the air. And anything I can do to improve the air quality and safety in my space is always a good thing. Now, what materials can you cut with the, the different types of saws? Well, both of them will cut steel. We've done a lot of steel cutting here today. Um, an abrasive saw, most discs are set to cut steel and stainless steel, most ferrous hard metals, and they do a, a good job at that. And they can actually cut really hard materials. However, most of the discs for these aren't set up to cut aluminum or other soft metals that it can gum up on the discs and, and keep them from cutting. Now, when it comes to the carbide tipped blades, there are different blades for different materials that have the right cutting geometry. So uh, we've been using a steel blade, but you can change that over to aluminum and it cuts right through it. There's a stainless blade. And so there are different options there to be able to cut whatever material you want. And that's something to think about if you want to fabricate with a wide variety of materials. If you're just working with steel, it's probably not really a factor for you. Now let's just touch on cost for a minute. Abrasive saws are going to be cheaper than those with a carbide tooth blade by a bit. I'll put links to these saws in the description so you can check it out and do your own math. Um, however, when you look at the cost over the life of using it and the cost of blades, the abrasive discs, while they're cheap, they wear out pretty fast. And so they did a study, Evolution had a company do an independent study where they compared the life of both blades and they found that they had more than 20 times the life on the carbide tooth blade than an abrasive blade. And after having used both types of saws quite a lot, I, I'd say that agrees with my experience. Let me know in the comments what you think if you've used both types. The life of abrasive blades can actually be even shorter because they wear out as you go. So if you're cutting through larger material, at a certain point, it won't be able to make it all the way through and you're gonna have to throw it out early. If you do the math on that, you end up spending a little bit less per cut for the carbide tipped blade. But what I think is far more important to the cost equation is your time. And if you factor in that you save a little bit of time on each cut and deburring and things like that, there's a fair savings going with the carbide tooth blade compared with an abrasive saw, but you've got to do that math for yourself and your own situation and see what makes sense. I've been using evolution chop saws for pretty much all of my fabrication projects for the past five years or so, long before they ever sponsored anything on the channel. And I basically never use abrasive saws for all of the reasons that you saw in this video. It just saves me a bit of time, saves a little money, 
And overall, it's just a better fabrication experience and I make a better product with a higher level of craftsmanship. So for me, uh, with the space that I have and the portability of these chop saws, it's really a great fit. Hey, well, thanks a ton for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this, let me know by hitting that thumbs up or leaving me a comment and we'll see you next time.